Hey there, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'd like to show you how I built this 10-foot conference table with built-in outlets to charge your devices and a no-weld base using chain-link fence parts. So let's get started on modern builds. Okay, so it's time to build the base, and to do it, I'm using seven foot sections of chain link fence posts. The big one is two and three eighths of an inch, while the thinner ones are an inch and five eighths. I'm using these because they're super affordable. You can get each of these for about 10 to 15 bucks, and they've got ready-made fittings, so I'm not gonna have to do any welding. Before cutting anything, I needed to measure and mark my legs at 29 and a half inches. And I'm using this thick piece of cardstock wrapped around the pipe to make sure I was making a square parallel line. Now I wasn't sure if a reciprocating saw or an angle grinder was going to be the tool of choice for cutting all of these pipes, so I did a side-by-side -side test. And as you can see, not only did the angle grinder cut a little quicker, it was a little easier to manage and keep on that line. The saws all definitely worked, but if you have an angle grinder, I do highly recommend it. Still, after all my cuts, I sanded the ends with 80 grit sandpaper to clean them up. Next, I laid out my legs along with a 7-foot stretcher and got my chain-link fence fittings. These T-fittings are considered specialty parts, so you're not going to find them at your Lowe's or your Home Depot probably, but they are easy to find online, and they only cost a couple bucks a piece. I used a 2x4 and a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood as a spacer for my long 7-foot stretcher. The fitting wraps around the pieces in two parts, and then a carriage bolt locks everything together. This was my first time using these fittings, so I had no idea how strong of a hold they would have, so I wanted to do a dry run before adding any adhesives. I attached all of my pieces together and tightened them down as much as possible, but unfortunately found that there was still a little bit of wobble between all of my pieces. So, one by one, I took each of my joints apart and spread some original Gorilla Glue on each of the fittings. Gorilla Glue expands and is activated by water, so I used a wet rag on each of my pipe pieces to get the curing process started. As I went from joint to joint, I made sure that each of my fittings were as tight as possible. I also kept a framing square with me to make sure that my base didn't get out of alignment. After the adhesive cured overnight, I got a box blade out and I removed any of the excess Gorilla Glue by just scraping it away. It cleaned up really nicely. Then, it was time to move on to paint. And before applying a couple coats of flat white paint, I applied two coats of clean metal primer from Rust-Oleum. Anytime I'm painting metal, I use their Stops Rust line of enamel paint. It works best. With the base pretty much done, it was time to move on to creating the table tops. Each of the tables are going to have a finished dimension of right around 10 feet by 4 feet. So I started by breaking down my two pieces that are going to join together to create the top. Each of them are cut 4 feet wide by 5 feet long. After that, I cut two 12-inch long pieces for the bottom. Now I am using my DIY track saw for my circular saw. If you haven't seen that video, it'll be linked in the description. It is super useful for projects like this. This 8-foot piece, along with the two 1-footers, make up the bottom layer of the tabletop. What you see me doing here is centering the base on this piece of plywood so that I can mark and cut holes through it with a hole saw. Because the tabletop is two layers of plywood thick, I'm going to have the base go through the bottom layer but be stopped by the top layer of plywood. This is going to lock the base into the tabletop without requiring any fasteners. It's also going to make it really easy to transport and assemble. After applying a considerable amount of Gorilla Wood Glue to my plywood, especially around the edges and anywhere there was seams, I used inch and a quarter construction screws to attach all of my plywood pieces together. Whenever you're attaching all of these pieces together, keep into consideration the fact that we're going to be routing out sections for the power outlets, so don't put any screws in places that you're going to run blades. That would not be fun. As y'all know, my DIY track saw can only cut through one layer of plywood, so I decided to freehand all of my edges square. I just took my time and I got really good lines. These are the power strips that I'll be integrating into the tabletops and they're really nothing special. To keep with the theme of accessibility and affordability, I just went onto Amazon and I found some clean, white power strips that would traditionally go under a desk or behind a TV. I'll be using my plunge router along with a 3 quarter inch double flute straight bit to cut all of my recesses. 
I used a straight edge to maintain consistent lines and I made each cut in three passes so that I wasn't doing too much at once. And while I do that, I'd like to give a big thanks to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. I think it's safe to say that here on Modern Builds, we are all about building things ourselves, from a coffee table to a conference table, but have you thought about building your own website? Squarespace is the one-stop shop for building your own website, bar none. Squarespace's built-in designer templates look amazing right out of the box, but what's so amazing is that it's incredibly easy to customize for a one-of-a-kind look. And I'm serious, you need no website building experience whatsoever. If you can drag and drop files, edit text and gallery blocks, you can build your own site. Long ago, before they were a sponsor of Modern Builds, I used Squarespace to create the first Modern Builds website, and I recommend it all the time. And if you are interested in doing the same, make sure and follow the link down in the description, squarespace.com forward slash modern builds. And don't forget, use the code modern builds at checkout for 10% off your first site. Thanks Squarespace. Regular viewers know that the plunge router is relatively new to me, so my recesses weren't perfect. Here's one little spot where I messed up. That's no biggie though, I'm gonna roll with the punches and keep this project moving. Right now I'm using the drill to create space for the power plug and the cord to go through the recess and under the underside of the table. Perfect fit. And for symmetry, I had each of my power strips face the center of the table. All right, time to level with you. We tried to put the tabletop on the table base, and unfortunately, there was a little bit of sway in the tabletop. It was just too long of a span for this to stay rigid. In a perfect world, I would have bought more connectors and I would have been able to create a center post in the base. You can see what I'm talking about in this drawing right here. But because I had to special order the connectors and I don't have time to get more ships to me, I've got to come up with another solution. And before I go trying anything crazy, I want to try the simplest solution first, and that is to cut some 2x4s to length and attach them as rails on the underside of the tabletop. Even though this worked, it added enough rigidity that there was no more sag, I still recommend using a center post instead. I think this will work for now. Thanks, John. Thanks. <laughs> From there, I could sand all of my tabletops and get ready for finish. Now, I encountered another problem here. Unfortunately, my plywood veneers were incredibly thin. You can see in this picture right here. This made the seam in the center of my tabletop really ugly because I sanded through it a little bit in parts. But that's no problem. I used some masking tape to create a cantilevered slant on the tabletop. Then I grabbed one of the samples of the Maker brand furniture paint that we're developing and used this as an opportunity to test it out. I applied two coats and then sanded between my third final coat. I don't want to give too much away about the furniture paint we're developing, but once it comes out later this spring, I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. Whenever I was laying out my painter's tape, I knew I didn't want a straight line down the table. I was worried it was going to look too much like a ping pong table. So I used the center seam of the table as reference, and on one side, I measured six inches from the seam, and the other an inch and a half. And I did the inverse of that on the other side to create a cantilevered slant, if that makes sense. Because of the paint, I used three coats of water-based polyurethane, instead of anything oil-based. It keeps the paint color true, even though it doesn't help those plywood veneers pop. Fun fact, if you ever want to get rid of crappy printed logos on products, a little bit of acetone on makeup remover pads work great. Whatever you do, just make sure and be gentle. If I scrubbed too hard, it would have started removing the white from the power strip. This is double-sided mounting tape, and it's what I'm going to use to secure the power strips into their recesses semi-permanently. Of course, cable management is its own problem, and I will address that whenever I deliver the pieces. But for the sake of this video, this project is done! I am really, really happy with how this project came out. Once I figured out how affordable fence parts and fittings were, I knew I had to integrate them into a project somehow. 
and I think a huge conference table that is typically a really expensive piece is a great utilization. So that's all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry there's not more pictures of the final piece. As you can tell, this table is almost as big as the studio that I'm taking photos in. So if you're not already, make sure and follow me on Instagram at Modern Build so that you can see these pieces when I finally get them delivered. If you plan on building this project for yourself, make sure and check out the PDF plans on my website, linked in the description. I've adjusted those drawings to take into account the bow that I experienced in the center of my table so that you don't have that same problem. If you're not already, make sure and click that subscribe button down below me. And if you're not getting my videos in your subscription feed, make sure and hit that bell so you get notified when I post new content. If you've got any questions or comments, leave those below or hit me up on Instagram and we will see you next time on Modern Builds. Bye everybody.